um, and we will move on to um, hear about the UK um, and the issues around human trafficking that have been brought up in the chapter on the research. Um, and we are joined this evening by the former president of Renate, Imelda Poole, who has prepared a very concise PowerPoint of information. Um, and of course, we're going to get more than that from Imelda because she will draw upon her years of experience um, and practice, not only with practitioners in Albania, but also in the UK and further afield. So over to you and welcome Imelda. Uh, good evening, everybody, and um, I'm so happy to be with you as a member of Renata. I'm just going to put this on, as Brian would advise me, to the, um, yeah. yeah. Are we okay? Is that all right for everybody? Perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. Thank you, Brian. Um, so, yes, it's a joy to be here, and on uh, the other side of me feels very chastened by all I have heard so far today. Um, but I want to begin with a maybe a, a, a hopeful note, um, which has surprised me that I have this to share as uh, sharing about UK and the um, horrific situation here, as in many countries in Europe, of human trafficking in the on the ground, is that um, a group of um, and it says this in the research that a group of uh, networking organizations actually um, are working together both for sharing resources but also for lobbying and um, this uh, have you can you see sorry that's fine yeah thank you and um, actually uh, only last week uh, a new initiative has been made by the government and has actually changed the uh, all the modern slavery work from the migration section of the of um, the government to safeguarding, and that is very significant. And I wonder whether many people who were lobbied by this group in the government and preparing for the new, the election, which led to the new party of Labour taking over, actually was influenced by this document. And that's why I'm bringing this in. I don't think we should underestimate the value of this document because it has been shared around by many. And in this new uh, development, which is under the safeguarding uh, watch of Jess Phillips, the, the new minister, um, there are three essential ingredients which I would like to keep toing and froing in what were the findings of this research for UK. And one was to eradicate the thousands of backlogs of victims of human trafficking who have not managed to get their status right as asylum or through the NRM. And Jess Phillips and her department are, are absolutely committed to doing that. And so they're going to employ 600 new workers in the civil service. Now I'd like to throw out to lawyers um, in the UK, if they hear this, that uh, they need to be ensuring that the government has good lawyers in the midst of these 600 so that the work is done with trauma informed which is in our research and is victim protected and victim centered these things are so important in this brilliant initiative which even this network have highlighted on google as a great first step for what they were wanting to have changed and also there's a drive to build up the cases for prosecution that's another commitment which is again another problem that we have is prosecution in britain the seed all the way through and finally um, to combat um modern slavery, taking it from, from the safeguarding, from the migration to safeguarding, not only brings the victim-centred um, em emphasis, but also highlights the journey that sometimes, um, if they don't get legal aid, this is, this is again in the research, the issue of the victim or survivor going on a detour away from safety, 
and the services she or he has rights to, human rights to, are avoided and they get lost in gaps. And I've had several um, UK uh, phone calls and, and work from victims in the UK from Albania who have been lost in the gaps. And these are very traumatised, double traumatised young people who end up homeless or sick or, or very, very poor. And are at the home, the, the food banks was one of them that was 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 um, picked up and she had been trafficked and lost in the system in Britain. So this is what I wanted to begin with, to sort of really um, toss between what's happening now, which may have been triggered by the research, but certainly by the creed occur of from the hearts of lawyers and people working at grassroots with victims in the UK. So what does the research actually say are the issues of concern, which is where it triggers its beginning statements? And um, I think we need to go back just to begin with where, where we, um, sorry, could we go hmm, in the wrong way? That's it. So we, we're going to look at what Greta says. Greta, Greta, Greta actually, in, in assessing Britain's situation, said actually that Britain has a dearth of highly qualified legal aid uh, adequate for the work against human trafficking because of the complexities of it. And also even a, la a, a lack of legal assistance from lawyers who are barristers or with legal firms who are not qualified enough in human trafficking to do their work at the higher expertise level that is needed. And this has was taken up in uh, the research and talked about, well, you know, in the whole journey, which is hugely long, could be three, four, five years because of the the, the slow pace as indicated in this new move uh, last week, uh, the slow pace of the law, the slow pace of getting any answers along the way. The fees are so, so low for this work and many have many of the lawyers have fallen off the edge because they've been consistently doing their work but either financially can't continue or indeed they are broken you know the, the actual work who is looking after the lawyers in all this and that's another big issue that's brought up in the research and i was really pleased to see that and and the other issue was about um the whole thing of the the dearth of um, lawyers in the system itself. And so there's the quality, there's the, the lack of remuneration, the lack of care for lawyers along the way. There's also this dearth of, of lawyers in the system itself. And it's left thousands and thousands of victims without legal aid, legal support in Britain. And there are people do, just do not know of the 30, 13,000 victims actually noted last year in 2023 in Britain. There are so many more lost in the gaps because of all these um, very difficult situations. And ATLU, who is a very, very um, important organisation in Britain that um, is, is uh, an organisation that is consisting of law and actually trains lawyers in human trafficking, they, they actually talked of the fact that 90% of victims in 2023 were not actually uh, able to find or access legal aid or lawyers to serve them. That is a massive percent. When you think of, you know, the OSCE says there's only 0.2% of victims identified in any country and you multiply 13,000 how many have we got that aren't actually getting the support that is needed um, at all so that was uh, the first issues of concern and the second are these legal deserts in England and Wales where victims in certain parts maybe the northeast of England uh, parts of Wales where there is really no no lawyers available so either the victim survivor has to travel to get an appointment to a, a legal aid or lawyer or they have to pay private lawyer and 
Sometimes this is impossible, and even if they do, sometimes the private lawyers are not qualified enough, and so once again the victims get lost in the system. So this poor legal assistance is um, another uh, si situation we have talked about, um, but there are other areas around that that we need to consider, and that is that in England, and I specifically talk about England, um, there is very little what we call qualified bodies of legal aid or lawyers who have had any training about human trafficking. Whereas in Scotland, actually, in the research, it highlights that there is. There are three or four organisations that they can uh, call upon and Scotland is not that big and so they have probably better services for human trafficking people in Scotland than in England and Wales so I think that's something to be pointed out and then there is the whole issue of compensation so um, we like many of the countries already indicated have a very poor system for getting compensation and um, su support workers often try and these support workers are really taking the place of lawyers when they can't be found so they may be social workers they may be psychologists certainly many of these people have contacted us in albania about albanians in the uk trafficked so i'd like to sort of say that's a very common alternative you might say but they uh, try to navigate the complex what they call cica form which is the criminal injuries compensation authority and this is just almost too complex you know and if you've not had training um i'm sure annie will talk about some of this when she's going to do about training and and the needs uh, and the 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 components that are necessary this is a, such a vital one if you don't know about the navigation of this complex cica and you're not going to get your compensation and i could say a lot more than that but i want to move sharply through this because i know there's other speakers after me Thanks, Imelda. Yes, we are stuck for time, unfortunately. Yes. So just to uh, quickly say, you can look at this, and these are the legal practitioners work with victims of human trafficking and the criteria for quality expertise. I don't need to unwrap these because they speak for themselves, but they're important. And I do encourage everybody to read this research because it is so important. But these, this is the criteria for quality expertise. Annie will talk more about that. And these are the recommendations. This is my final slide, and you'll be pleased to know. <laughs> so the recommendations also speak for themselves, and they have actually been spoken about by many of our colleagues before me. So they include uh, free legal advice in modern slavery victim contracts, promoting train training in modern slavery for lawyers, and promoting knowledge for sharing forums. And this is very important. And I have to say, in the UK, this is the main forum for education at the moment, except at Lou, which has a massively good training program, which Annie will talk about. And then the advance of free legal aid and programs aimed at lawyers embedded within police forces. Again, Annie is a, a a lawyer for the police, and she will unwrap this for us too. So thank you very much, Anne, and thank you to all your patients. And I've enjoyed sharing some of these facts with you. Super. Thank you so very much, Imelda. And, and those concise notes that you have prepared on that PowerPoint, it really hit home the, the significance for everybody of that information relation to uh, the UK. Interesting about the, the distinction between uh, England and Scotland. Interesting to 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 hear about that, um, and it'd be nice to follow up on that at some stage. Um, but in actual fact, coming through all the time in what you were presenting is the the question we all need to ask: Who cares for the carer? Who cares for those legal practitioners? To the extent that they're dropping off, as you say. So, a very interesting presentation. Thank you very much, Imelda. And um, before we go to Annie Bannister in the UK, and um,